Resident Evil is no stranger to the world of spin-offs, with multiple light gun games, co-op shooters, and Java-based games on old mobile phones. Now the series takes a crack at competitive shooting, and the end result is one of the worst games I've ever played. Awful. Were you even trying? Umbrella Corps takes place in a training zone for members of Umbrella's armed forces. Just don't expect any cutscenes or narrative because there isn't one. The game combines first-person and third-person shooter elements. The controls are jerky, and the way the character slides around the environment is really awkward. Furthermore, you can only take cover in specific spots, but the cover system is made redundant by the fact that no zombies can fire projectiles. The single-player campaign is comprised of short missions and maps taken from the multiplayer component, and it's a real slog mainly because it recycles the same six tiny maps and there are only three types of objectives. Collect zombie DNA, defend strategic points, and collect briefcases. You do this again and again throughout the entire free hour campaign. Deaths are also pretty cheap with some enemies killing you by simply rubbing up against you. Even the 10 minute missions force you to start from the beginning which is frustrating. It feels like a cheap trick to extend the lifespan of the game's short campaign. There is a radar, but it's so tiny and difficult to read, it may as well not even exist. This one's mine. Multiplayer is pretty much a ghost town, but if you find someone, it allocates you into teams of three people in both modes of gameplay, one life match and multi-mission. As the name suggests, one life match gives you only one life, and you're out of the match until everyone in a single team has been defeated. The emphasis on quick kills is similar to Quake 3, which would be a good thing if the controls and gameplay weren't so tedious. Multi-mission has you coordinating with teams to complete various objectives, which keeps changing with every round. Unfortunately, this mode brings in additional problems, such as respawns in front of zombies and enemy fire. Plus, the zombies now take 20 shots to kill, and just like the single player, many can kill you by brushing up against you. It's a mess, and the only good thing I can say is the netcode functions without any lag. Progression is awarded with additional costumes, patches, and weapons, but variation in guns is minimal, with every type of machine gun, pistol, and shotgun behaving almost the same as each other. You know what they say, if at first you don't succeed... Capcom has a reputation for making good PC ports, but Umbrella Core suffers from poor optimization. You can adjust the resolution and a couple of effects, however there isn't any options for anti-aliasing, texture quality, or V-Sync. I have to admit, I don't have the most powerful rig, but I can still run Resident Evil 6 and the recent Revelations 2 with all the graphical settings turned up, but still hit 60 frames per second. With Umbrella Core, I was forced to switch off most of the effects to reach the desired 60 frames per second, but even then I still experienced constant drops in frames, which doesn't make sense when the game looks nowhere near as good as the aforementioned games. Your performance is lacking. I was visiting Japan when Umbrella Core was released, and there were shelves dedicated to this game including a limited edition PS4 console. It's really depressing to see a game like this being given the red carpet treatment. Between this and Street Fighter V's botch launch, I've lost all faith in Capcom. Which is sad, since they used to be my favorite third party publisher of fresh games like Ghost Trick, Killer7, Okami, and Beautiful Joe. Sadly, those golden days are no more. Exactly what you deserved. 